Have you ever wished for a trading strategy that is both simple and effective? What if I told you that such a strategy existed since 2009 and still making money till today? And not on single instruments, but on multiple instruments. Back in 2009, Larry Connors published his book, Short-Term Trading Strategies That Work. And they do work still till today. There are many strategies published in this book, and one of them is called Double Seven. It's a mere version strategy. There is no surprise there, as most of Larry Connors' strategies are mere version. I am also in that camp. I'm slowly tilting towards more mere version strategy. The premise of the strategy is really simple. We are looking for a pullback, and in this case, it's seven days pullback. So when the close is the lowest close compared to the previous seven days, we will buy. And when the close reverts back to the mean, meaning when the close is the highest close of the past seven trading days, we will close the trade. And here is the code in easy language. So it's two lines. If the close is the lowest close for the past seven days, we buy. And if the close is the highest close of the past seven days, then we sell. Larry Connors added a filter, which is usually works very well for any mere reversion strategy on the indexes. And the filter is this, is the close greater than the average close of the past 200 days. Basically, it's a simple moving average the past 200 days. And this is not optimized. You can use any number and it will work. Here I'm using multi-chart and I have the data loaded for SPY. SPY is the ETF for the S&P 500 and the data here is since 1995. So the strategy is applied and we are using all the account to buy the maximum number of shares. This is usually the best way to test stocks and ETFs because stocks and ETFs, when you go back, they are usually smaller price and in order to make all trades equal in strength, you need to use all the account as the best way. Of course, you can use position sizing, but to make it simple, just use all the account. And that's why you see different number of shares. So 410, 419, 393. And even though when the account here is more money, you can see we are buying less shares. It's just because the price now is a lot higher. Now, the usual problem with any mere reversion strategy is this when the exit parameter doesn't happen quickly. So usually you get a big drawdown. See also this, even though the trade is profitable, the drawdown was big. Now, obviously what you want is like this, where you buy and you keep going up and then you exit. Also notice that we are not holding for seven days. This is the seven is just the close compared to previous closes. So it could happen the next bar. And so you can see here we are holding five days, here we are holding 15 days and so on and so forth. And for example, this trade, we are holding only one day because the next day, the close was the highest close of the past seven days. Here is the performance of the strategy. Like I mentioned, we are using the whole account to buy. So we make $135,000. Our biggest drawdown is $25,000. So that gives us five to one return to drawdown ratio since 1995 and if we look at the trades we have 274 trades and a win rate of 77 percent on average we're making about 500 dollars now remember this strategy has been trading for 28 years here but it's been out of sample for 15 years and the amount we are in the market is about 30 percent and let's see the out of sample so the book was published in 2009 and the research was until 2007. So we have about 15 years of out of sample. And in those 15 years, we have four losing years and the rest are winning years. So that is a great testimony to this simple, simple strategy. Now to me, starting with strategies like this and add your own spin on it is the best way to build a portfolio. And instead of trying complicated strategies or machine algorithms just to find strategies that are complicated, I would much rather use a simple strategy and just add a simple spin on it, like adding my own filter. And you will already have a proven strategy because we already see the out of sample trades. And by adding our filter, we just change the profile of the strategy and now add it to our own portfolio. 
But before we do that, let me just also show you that seven days was research up to 2007. And in fact, today, because there are more participants in the market, it makes sense to make the seven days shorter. But you know, we cannot just talk. Let's test that here. So here we have the entry and exit and let's test them from two to 10. Now I expect the shorter period to make better money, but let's see. So 81 combinations in total. And here are the results. And if we sort by return to drawdown, so here is our original strategy. Out of 81 combinations, our original strategy is at 32. So we have 31 strategies better than ours. And let's look at the top 10, so three and six. So that is what I expected. It's the shorter term that makes more money. So three, six, four and six, two and six, four and five, four and seven, all the way up to here. So the first 11 strategies at the top, like I expected, shorter term makes more money or makes better risk adjusted return. But here we have three strategies that is a surprise to me. This is 10 and four, 10 and six and 10 and seven. I don't know what to say, but obviously we will have less trades as you can see, because we're waiting for 10 lower closes. So you can see this is 200, 200, and also this 200, while all the others are uh, 400 and 500, and this is 800. Now, if I pick the best risk adjusted return, so this is strategy number one. And let's look at the performance. So this is since 1995, and the out of sample is now three years instead of four down years. But overall, the strategy performs much better in terms of risk adjusted return, which is basically we're saying how much money we are making compared to how much more money we are risking. Next, we are going to test the original strategy on multiple ETFs. Now, Larry Connors in his book, he tested, I think, three ETFs, which probably at the time we didn't have as many like today, we have thousands. So I compiled a portfolio of roughly above 40 ETFs, many countries, commodities, oil, gold, and sectors, and so on and so forth. So just to see how the strategy will perform on these ETFs. So this is a portfolio of uh, 45 ETFs. These are the SPY ETF with different weights and then Asia Pacific, Japan, small caps, value caps, Eurozone, in India, Canada, Russell and sectors. It's a very diverse list of ETFs. So let's back test the same strategy, so this is the original strategy, buying seven day close low, selling seven day close high. And the filter is the 200 day moving average. And here are the results of all ETFs. And as expected, the SPY and of course, these derivatives of SPY and then the Dow Jones and all these countries, they all behave almost the same way they are mere reverting. And then the DBC USO, this is oil and commodities. And then this is, I think, gold. And this is ARK Invest ETF. And I don't know which one's this, I forgot. But you can see that all these ETFs perform extremely, extremely well, even though they totally represent different underlying assets. So for example, this is the emerging, and this is Japan, this is small cap, and this is the world index without uh, the US, I think. And then we go down and look at these. These are all the sectors. So yes, of course, they are part of the S&P 500 index, but alone they perform differently. Now, previously in the video, I told you the best way to develop new strategies is to use an old strategy that is performing and out of sample and add your own spin on it. And your own spin is usually a filter. So the more filters you accumulate, the more diversification you add to your equity curve, even on the same strategy. Let's see this in action. Here I have four versions of the double seven strategy. They're all applied to the same data, which is the SPY. This is just to show you that diversification comes from different strategy filters, even on the same instrument. So here I have my template strategy. This is a big template. I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but basically I'm using a different filter in each strategy. So for example, this is 27, 57, 91, 16, and so on and so forth. 
the idea is they are all using the same entry and exit. So seven days uh, low to entry, seven days high to exit. But the filter now is different. Instead of the 200 day moving average, I have something else. And like I always say, usually direction and volatility are the best filters, although there are hundreds of other filters. So if we back test this now, and this is very interesting. It's the same strategy, the double seven on the same instrument, but I'm only changing the filter. And by just changing the filter, look at the correlations. This is highly correlated, 0.67. This is 0.25 and this is 0.1. So this is like totally different strategy. It's like totally different instrument. This is zero correlation. Now also some of you might say, well, you know, 0.67, this is, you know, highly correlated. But still, I would much rather split my capital in two, trade this one and this one, rather than all the capital on one strategy. Because even though it's the same instrument, it's highly correlated, but still I'm getting diversification. In this case, I divide my capital in four buckets and trade four strategies instead of trading one strategy with all my capital. And here we can look at the performance of this portfolio. So yes, we have drawdowns. That doesn't mean we get rid of drawdowns. But in fact, if I spend more time, I can find better filters that take care of this drawdown. Meaning I will find a filter that performs better in down markets and add it to the strategy. So I make a smoother equity curve. To learn more about Larry Connor strategies that work, watch this video and I will see you there.